One of the titles I was requested to look at with this new boots mode on the PS4 was Bloodborne. Now I've already covered probably one of the best titles in terms of the CPU performance flat. Just Cause 3 already, which you can check out with the link below and on screen. Now, not every title will see a significant boost. 30% or 33% is around the maximum you're going to see at any one point, unless collectively you've got CPU, GPU, and bandwidth bound issues in one title, and maybe I'll come across those. But by and large, this isn't going to change the world, so don't get carried away. But one of the titles that did suffer from performance issues, or at least frame pacing issues on top of that, which was the biggest problem with the title, was Bloodborne. It single-handedly made frame pacing a thing this generation, even though it was nothing to do with this generation, or this title specifically at all. Now, the game itself did suffer from this, no matter where you were, and no matter what you were doing in the title. Walking, running, attacking, running away, and generally dying could cause these skips and stutters, which basically means the frame time is jumping between 16 milliseconds which is what you would expect of a 60 hertz or 60 fps title and 33 milliseconds which is the point you would expect for a 30 hertz or 30 fps title and then right down to 50 milliseconds which is what you would expect of a 20 hertz or 20 fps title what happens here is the game is probably most likely double buffered in fact i'm pretty sure it is so what happens is when the game runs out or it doesn't have enough time it skips the frame so it misses the budget but it only has has two frames it can render the one that's flipped it's at the front of the screen and the one it's currently rendering now if it can't flip the buffer then you end up with a new frame held so you don't get a change of the frame at all you end up with the same frame held over two consecutive frame points this being a 30 fps title means you then flip to the next refresh rate which is another 16 milliseconds on top of that hence the 50 millisecond time from 33 or 49.9 to be precise so what you get here is once that happens and the game catches up, it then has to flip the next frame because it no longer has memory left to render another frame. So you end up with a spike that goes 50 milliseconds, 60 milliseconds and then back to the 30 flat. Now this can happen consistently for a long period of time or randomly as you play the game. You can see it on the frame time graph on the right hand side. You can see also that the boost mode doesn't fix this at all. It's exactly the same in sense you will see that the dips are pretty much eradicated now now this is most likely gpus and not cpu that are causing these dips below the motion blur the quality of the assets the texture quality and overall the draw rate in this game is pretty immense so 30 fps was the best we could really tolerate from a game like this on the console specifications and the boost mode basically means that it doesn't dip below 30 anymore on my tested sections it may do more heavier sections and the game does have many more that i could test but here and now you can see that the frame pacing issues, even though they're not solved, they are actually better. Now throughout this tested section you can see on the screen, the analysis comes in at 215 frame time spikes and dips on the base PS4 and around 126 on the boost mode on the PS4 Pro. So this means you're getting circa 42%. Now you've got to take in margin of error because it's an engine loop, nothing's going to be exactly identical. So if you knock that down, you're again hovering around the 30% boost and that's really what you're seeing. Most likely the game doesn't spread all of its rendering and AI and game logic and animation across all the cores. So now this boost in performance is causing these dips where it was running over just to miss slightly and therefore deliver a more consistent 30 fps where these small little boosts are actually helping that out but it won't eradicate it completely because these kind of issues are much more systemic of the code base and the engine rendering time than just a simple performance issue if you could boost the system right up to complete all of these jobs within 16 milliseconds then yes you would literally see a 60 fps title and there would be no worries at all but that isn't possible here this isn't what's going to happen this small boost in cpu and gpu just basically smooths out some of the issues you had on some of the titles it's not going to change the world and bloodborne unfortunately for those hoping it's not going to be fixed by this boost mode it is a little smoother and it is a little more consistent but don't expect the game to now be silky smooth all the way through it still has frame pacing issues although like the dips they are greatly reduced here but they are not eradicated totally it's one of the smaller probably lower end boosts you will see on this boost mode but again it's welcome for people that are that way inclined i never really had a massive issue with bloodborne frame pacing issues you kind of get used to it after a period of time because it's that inconsistency that you just kind of ignore i know some people are well into their frame rate and performance therefore it bothers them and i like a solid game just like anybody else but this game you kind of overlook the small issues like that because it's such an amazing game to play
And with that, I'm probably off to enjoy a little bit more Bloodborne whilst I've got the game back in my PS4. You guys and girls take care, leave all your thoughts and requests below, and I'll be back soon with much more coverage on this. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten PC and Xbox One. It's just unfortunately we are in the realms where Sony are just doing a lot of work with releasing and updates, and I've got to get things out there that people are interested. Anyway, you guys and girls take care, and I'll catch you on the next one.